You guys were told today that you will receive a lecture or a talk or a lesson or a discussion on intercultural slash interracial marriages in light of the Quran and the Sunnah. But unfortunately, you have been tricked. You've been deceived, and maybe you have been lied to. Instead of me giving you guys a lecture or speaking, I'm going to act like a professor today, okay? A very nice and a very kind professor. Hopefully, your favorite type of professor, and that is the professor that gives you a test and an exam without warning, okay? Everybody like these kind of professors, correct? Said? Right or wrong? Your favorite, right? In the whole university, a little small pop quiz with a major exam because you guys are hardworking students. Correct? You guys study day and night, you sacrifice your free time, you cut off your phones and your tablets, you stay off of Facebook or Instagram to study the knowledge that you so much love. Alright? So, question number one, guys. Everybody ready, inshallah? First question is, you guys want to write it down or you want to raise, it, raise your hands? Yeah. You sure? I have pins. Do you mind if you like? Write it or raise it? Taj? You sure? All right, inshallah. Question number one. Everybody listen up, please. I want everyone to tell me, listen very carefully, what you know about intercultural and interracial marriages in Islam. Not what you think, not what you feel, but what you know. And what I what I mean by know is from Quran and Sunnah. From Quran and Sunnah. That's the thing that we're sure of. Everything other than that could be, maybe, maybe not. Everybody clear on this? So the first one to answer the question, the volunteer will receive a great deal of leniency and the grade. Inshallah. The greatest. Who wants to go first? Father, I'm gonna repeat. What do you, are you saying that you know that it is permissible for there to be intercultural? Listen carefully, guys. They are not the same. Listen very carefully. Culture and race sometimes are parallel, and other times they're very inconsistent and they're not parallel. Just because it's the same race does not mean it's the same culture. Just because it's a different race doesn't mean that it's a different culture. Everyone understand this? We have two things now intercultural and interracial. Suburbs from inner city. Country versus the bustling metropolis. Everyone understand this? You come from a family of farmers and weavers, and there's no shame in that, versus a white collar professional family. It's night and day. Everyone understand this? You could have married someone from a different race, different gene and nationality, etc., and they see eye to eye with you on cultural norms and values. We eat the same, we drink the same, we dress the same, versus someone who's from your family, same blood, same DNA, but tomato and tomato, night and day. Everyone understand this? This is very important before we can get into the topic. All right, so says it's permissible for there to be intercultural, intermarriage, uh, interracial marriage in All right, next answer. Come on guys, this is an exam. Everyone has to answer. Everyone has to answer. I'm dead serious, so I'm not joking. This is gonna to be today's lecture. Next answer is it, what do you guys know about it? Whatever you know, if you know, no, say I don't know. It's very simple. For the Nahian. It's, uh, it's obviously permissible. It's obviously permissible, he said. <laughs> not permissible, but what? Clearly permissible from the Quran and Sunnah. Right? What else? But um, there's obviously gonna be more like obstacles. Okay. All right, hey, obstacles have nothing to do with ruins, all right? You're admitted into this college, regardless of the obstacles, but you have been granted the scholarship. How you gonna come to college every day? That's your problem. We this, that, those obstacles, but you have a full, what? Scholarship, all right? That's the ruling. All right, next answer, come on guys. I need answers, please. I'm not gonna bite, will I? Inshallah. 
<laughs> okay? There's nothing wrong, just, but you guys have to participate, all right? You should notice if you watch our classes, I'm not just gonna talk to you and lecture you for an hour and bore you to death. What's the next answer? Father Dahi. The prophet had married um, outside of his own culture. The prophet married outside of his own culture, meaning that it would be permissible because the prophet did. Okay, all right. Next answer. Who's next? Anybody else? No sisters know anything about this? You guys don't know nothing from Quran and Sunnah? That it's haram or permissible to marry someone from a different culture or a different race? You guys know nothing? So the answer would be? Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you something, guys. I'll just stop. When I was in school overseas, it's a bit different than here. I had a teacher that would say, fill out everything and leave nothing blank. Leave nothing blank. He says, if you leave something blank, you automatically don't get the point. If you write something, you're going to get some type of grade at some point. Everyone understand this? Everybody clear on these words or not? You can never fail by trying, right? You miss 100% of the shots that you what? That you don't take. That was one of the early hockey coaches of Wayne Gretzky who was frustrated in his hesitation in shooting the puck. And he didn't force him or put him on a bench, but he wanted to change his mindset. He said, Wayne, you miss 100% of, of the shots that you don't what? Take. But if you take some shots, then you have a what? A percentage of making a goal. This is a life principle, guys, I'm trying to give you. If you're not willing to take any chance, if you always have cold feet and precaution, you won't get anywhere in life, in the deen or in the world. If you weren't a Muslim, you're not gonna go nowhere if you're always scared and afraid to just let go, all right? All right, next answer, Taj. Allah knows best. Beautiful answer, Taj. <laughs> next, next answer, guys. It, what do you guys know about marriage? Between cultures and races from the Quran and Sunnah. We need a sister now. Brothers, father. No, you gave an answer already. You, too late. You, you, you put it in the paper. Correct? You can't say, teacher, give it back. You did well. Zakhalok Khaira. You passed, inshallah. Next. The prophet encouraged intercultural marriages when they moved to Medina. The prophet encouraged intercultural marriages upon arriving to Medina. A very interesting answer. Zakhalok Khaira. Thank you. Next. Next answer, guys. No one else? Going once, going twice? Nobody else? Why are you Did you just repeat the question? Can't repeat the question. You guys, this is crystal clear. What do you know from Quran and Sunnah about an interracial or intercultural marriage? Period. Simple. It's like a sandwich. Easy and delicious. Huh? What the? So the ruling of the Quran and Sunnah changes because of time? No, no. It's, it's better. It's better for us now. Than it's ever. better to do it. Yeah. Okay. It's better for us now, if that's a possibility, than ever before. Than ever before. Okay. A very interesting answer. Anybody else, guys? No one else. No other sisters or brothers. Father that for you. You said, I heard that it's a ruling of Quran and Sunnah to marry a, a Muslim of a non-Muslim woman, she's of Jewish faith or Christian faith. In most cases, and Allah knows best, your answer right now is not there. But I'm going to help you a little, push you along. One could possibly say there's a big chance, it's not guaranteed, but it's a chance that if I'm a Muslim and she's a Christian, it could be a different race, or at least different culture. Even if we're from the same city, just the fact that Jew Muslim is going to be somewhat no doubt about that. You go to a kosher restaurant versus a halal restaurant. Things are different. Kosher glot. Things are very different. All right? So not a bad answer. Thank you very much. Anybody else, guys? You gave the answer. Nobody else. No, uh, no one else? You guys don't know anything else? All right. Next question. Next question. Listen carefully. What do you think? about intercultural slash interracial marriages in Islam. What do you think? Not what you know, what you think. 
We need new, we need new answers now, please. What do you think? You guys don't think at all? You have no thoughts? No one in this room has any thought? Huh? You guys have, you now I have a crush on someone from a different culture, a different race in college. That's hard to believe. <laughs> hard to believe or not? Very Impossible? Thank you. So you guys got to think something about it. I think brother man from Bangladesh is cute. I'm too shy to tell him he may not be the best husband, but I think he's what? Huh? Play it. Go ahead, sister. Um, I think it's beautiful. I don't know if culture or race or matter when it comes to marriage. As long as you have compatibility and respect to each other, it's cool. I think it's beautiful. And I don't think it should matter, but there should be compatibility as long as there's respect. All right, just okay. Beautiful answer. Right or wrong, didn't say that, but that's a good answer. Who else? We saw a few other hands up from the shy, shy side. What else do you, what do you think? What, what do you guys think of? What do you think about it? Or another question, what do you think about the ruling? Do you think it's permissible? What do you think Allah and his messenger would say no? You can only marry from your own culture and from your own race. It's a different question now. I think, yes, it is. I think it's permissible, okay? Because we can see in the past, um, it was happening during Muhammad's and Muhammad's. In the past, it happened in Muhammad's Sahaba, all right? The Sahaba of different ranks, different backgrounds, okay? Mecca, Medina, Sister Nation, right? And Saul and Muhajirin, okay? What else? And also, like, in the university, you can see... Allahu Akbar, living in NYC, all right? You're going to get a bonus for your answer, inshallah. What else? That's it? All right. Go ahead, sister. Um, I heard uh, in a letter. What do you think? That's all we want now. I what do you think? I think it's good. I think it's good. And if it's good, then it has to be permissible. Right? Yeah. From a pure Muslim perspective. Okay? I'm listening. Uh, I think it's good because I heard in a letter that... Um, if you marry inter like intercultural like interracial, then the kids are like smarter. Allah <laughs> Allah. <laughs> the kids are smarter. This is serious. This is serious. I heard that the children will be smarter by being biracial. You guys may laugh or joke, but think about it. You now they're they're, they're sound double. They have two worlds that they belong to, which could be bad or good. But if they survive, that means that they have more information, more foods, more clothes, more this, more that, more language. There's no doubt about that. All right, tell me anything else. Uh, I think it's good because they have like a greater genetic variation. So Allah Allah Allah. Allah. Now the brain is coming out, guys. I think it's good because they have a greater genetic variation. Brilliant of genes. The best of two different genes, what? Molded into one. All right, I'm listening. Um, so I was gonna say that we have like um, uh, less likely to contract like different types of diseases because of, like, further from diseases, they're stronger. Tayeb, okay, I'm listening. So like their the parents are immune to different things from different parts of the world. So the child is like they have a, a better genetic quality. Mixed martial arts, basically yeah. MMA. The weaknesses of the styles are canceled out by the strengths. And we're not living in ancient Korea or ancient China or ancient here. My enemy, he may have this weapon, he may have that. There's none of that in New York City. So it only makes sense to do what? To mix and to take the best from every way and eliminate the, the weakness and the flaw from every way. Very intelligent answer. Play it. Anybody else? What do you think? Or culture they are. So I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's right. I don't think it makes sense for a father or mother to say you can't marry this brother for the sheer reason he's a different culture or different race than you. As far as if he doesn't have a job, as far as if he has this horrible family history because of culture and race. All right, very good answer. It's very important to understand it like that, guys. I have to reword that question. It's very important because a father or mother may say, don't marry this guy. Not because he's from a different cultural race, but because 
his background is very suspect, if not clearly poor. And what I mean by poor is not money. I mean, he was raised in a house of drugs and alcohol. He was brought up in that traumatic lifestyle. And in most cases, it's going to carry on. So you need to avoid that. Allah has mercy on them. Allah can guide them. But you don't need to what? Deal with that. Mess with them. Or someone isn't the smartest or the strongest. And you are very smart, very strong. Well, I get that. And it's not, I have nothing to do because of the fact that it's from Bangladesh. Allah. It's nothing to do with that. But it's because of such and such and such and such. Very important difference. They're not the same. All right. Any other answers? Anything else, guys? Further. I think it should be encouraged. It should be encouraged. Allah Akbar. Not as permissible, but it what? Encouraged. encouraged. Similar to the answer over here. I think it's beautiful. I think it's why should it be encouraged, guys? Because I think the years of people being so in their own culture that they become intolerant to other cultures. Become intolerant. They become stale. Stagnant. What happens when you open up a bag of chips and you leave it open? What happens in the morning? Chips taste like what? Taste like paper. Ah, you gotta keep the freshness. <laughs> Ziploc. Correct? Right? Staleness. Stagnation. Only the same. All the same. The same. The same. The same. Things become extremely redundant. What freshness do you have? Huh? In your culture or your religion? Very important answer. Anybody else? It should be permissible. I think it should be permissible because uh, when you're marrying somebody from two different, when it's two people that are married from two different backgrounds, the child has a better perspective on life. The child gets to see the two, the two sides. The child can make his own or her own decision, and then take the, the best of both instead of just being stuck with one option. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Very good answer. Further, Akhi. Cultural norms could clash against each other, but they might not understand. So it should be avoided. That's the question. What do you think about it? I think uh, they, they both have their arguments, but for a lot of people, like you know, the reason like you know, they, they don't even work out is because there's so many cultural norms that you know the other person doesn't get. They end up breaking apart. Fire. Compatibility. A big part of compatibility is culture. You're saying a big part, a huge part. You want spicy food. And your wife wants salt and pepper. True. She wants raisins and potatoes. Right, Tej? You want your wife to cook with some really spicy spices. A lot, huh? And, and your wife says, well, I come from, we just put salt and pepper on it. Mashed potatoes. Meatloaf and broccoli. That's it. That's dinner. And you say the chicken or it has to be red. You ever understand this? I'm going to tell you a story once. No one take this the wrong way, okay? This is a true story. One day I was in Atlantic City. We were doing a conference. I was very hungry. Wasn't that much food in the conference. I went outside to a restaurant. The restaurant was owned by some Muslims. I won't mention where they were from. The way you guys won't say, oh, you got something against this race or this culture. So it was me, some brothers from Philly, brothers from New York, brothers from other parts of New Jersey. We went to the restaurant and they started ordering food. So, brother said, Mufti, I think you should get a shawarma. I think you should get this and rice. I think, I think, no, nah, I'm hungry, man. I want some real food, okay? I want a steak. And I saw a menu, T-bone steak. T-bone steak. So, obviously, my eyes, they lit up big like Garfield, right? Looking at lasagna. Why not? So, the brother said, Mufti, don't get the steak from here. I said, why not? I wouldn't go wrong. He said, Mufti. Don't get a T-bone steak from this restaurant ran by these people from this country. It's not going to work out for you. So I asked the lady, I said, Salaam alaikum, sister, how's the T-bone steak? She said, it's very good. I said, you sure? She said, it's very good, very good T-bone steak. I said, is it spicy? She said, no, not at all. There's no spice. It's an American T-bone steak. I said, all right, just me that. I ordered the T-bone steak. She gave me a plate. It was yellow white. It was some... Uh, uh, salad with some uh, white sauce or whatever, and the T-bone steak came. It was a T-bone steak, but the T-bone steak was red. It was red. Do you understand? Have you ever seen in a steakhouse a red T-bone steak? Meaning it was marinated and soaked in spices and colors for such a long time that the meat was red. I sliced the meat, which was overcooked, into the plate, and the plate started turning red. <laughs> the brother, he said to me, I told you. <laughs> Moral of the story is what? Is that in their culture, there's nothing wrong with a red T-bone steak. 
But in my culture, American culture, that's an abomination. <laughs> Literally, an abomination. There's, there's no excuse for that. T-bone steak, a little salt, a little pepper, some garlic, that's it. Correct? That's it, done, that's steak. Steak is not another type of dish, so it's about perception. They look at it as seasoned or bland. And I looked at it as, why is my steak red? Like the color of your jacket. Yeah, again, you, are you guys with me? And I don't think you understand. It's one thing you have chicken tikka, tandoori chicken, this type of chicken, this type of thing. But we're talking about a whole steak that's red. I don't understand the point I'm trying to get to. So your wife, to her, that's how a steak is to be made. And any woman who doesn't feed her husband these types of spices is a bad woman. Versus another culture in which you say, what is this woman? Everyone understand? It's culture. All right. Anybody else, guys? Anybody else? No one else? You guys ready for the next question? Ready. All right. My next question is, raise your hands if you're fasting today because of Monday. Is anyone doing a voluntary fast? Is anybody? You are? MashaAllah. Anybody making up a day before Ramadan comes? MashaAllah. Okay. Raise your hands if you're not fasting. The majority. Okay. All right. So, raise your hands if you have breakfast this morning. Raise your hands if you have brunch. No one have brunch? Right after this. It's not brunch anymore. Raise your hands if you had brunch already at 11. Right? <laughs> you, you ever drive through a fast food place, drive through? You want some breakfast? I want a breakfast and they say, oh, breakfast is what? Over. It's 11 a.m. It's lunchtime. But you want eggs and an English muffin. But they're now serving what? Lunch. So lunch technically starts when? At 11. Anybody had lunch yet? All right, raise your hands if you're going to have lunch. Do you plan on having lunch? Okay, guys. All right, so what did you have for breakfast this morning? You had what? An egg and a hash brown. An egg and a hash brown. Thank you. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, eggs and cheese. Eggs and cheese. Dal. Dal. Uh, a wheat soup. A wheat soup. Mashallah. See where we're going with this? All right. What did you have for breakfast? You. Yeah. You didn't have breakfast. Okay. In the red. What did you have for breakfast? Uh, some salad and fruits. Salad and fruits. Mashallah. Strong breakfast. Try it. What did you have for breakfast? A banana and a smoothie. All right. And what did you have? Two cups of milk. Two cups of milk. One cup of oats. One cup of oats. Six eggs. Six eggs. <laughs> Two scoops of peanut butter. Two scoops of peanut butter. Oh, banana. Mashallah. Healthy. Blended. Blended. What did you have, Yaki? Oh, I've got you here. I'm sorry? Afghan, Dodi, and, and Chai. Okay. All right, what did you have for breakfast? Yeah. Nothing. Anybody else want to share what they had for breakfast? That's all you guys, no one else had any other breakfast? Not cereal. cereal. What kind of cereal? Uh, Tricks. Okay. So I it with a bunny, right? All right, play it. Anybody else? No one else had any other breakfast? And then, yeah, these guys, you guys are stingy, man. You guys don't like me, but you guys are, you're not, they're not generous. For the Rahi. A coffee. A coffee, a large, but what type of coffee? Um, I put vanilla on it. Vanilla? All right. Anybody else? Two sunrise eggs. Two sunrise eggs. A sunrise egg. MashaAllah. Anybody else? Anybody else? No one else? Had any other type of breakfast? All right, next question, guys. What are you planning to have for lunch? Raise your hands if you want to share and tell us. What do you plan to have for lunch? Nahian. Pizza right there. <laughs> <laughs> Vinny's kosher pizza. What kind of pizza is that? Uh, it's kosher pizza. It's kosher pizza. Okay. What, what kind? What's, what top is on? There's no toppings. Just cheese. Just cheese. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? What are you having for lunch? Oh, a shot of espresso. I'm sorry. A shot of espresso. A shot of espresso. Yeah. What, what do you want but for the uh, lunch? I'm sorry. A little off. <laughs> Left in the car. What's left in the car? I don't know. I don't know. Anything in the car. Play. What do you want to have for lunch? I have some milk. I have some milk. Okay. Okay. 
something from home. What is it? Uh, chicken breast and rice. Chicken breast, rice? Well, how's the chicken breast made? Uh, with a lot of red. A lot of red. <laughs> right, okay. I thought, man. Chicken or rice. Gyro? Nah. Cart? Nah. What, what? Some real stuff? Oh, peri rice, yeah. It's peri peri, huh? Okay, all right. Tell you, anybody else? No one else wants to share what they have for lunch? All right, so let's go back to the first answer. Eggs and hash brown. What country or culture is that associated with? Americans. You sure? I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. Who are you Okay. You say British. You sure about that? I think so, yeah. An English breakfast, they call it? Yeah. Anybody else have any other answers? What about Scotland? No. Not true. European, for sure. Yeah. Then became American. All right, type coffee. Originated where? China. Yeah. China. <laughs> Anybody else know? Yeah. 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 Yemen. Yemen. The double strike. You guys want to strike out. Anybody else? <laughs> strike three. <laughs> 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 Where did coffee come from? Okay. Thank you. Coffee came from Ethiopia. And then from Ethiopia, from Ethiopia, it went to because Ethiopia and Yemen are like Abraham. That's how we feel. That's what they were really. Everyone understand this? Fine. Inshallah, may Allah bless you Google it. I mean. All right, guys. All right, next question. Sunrise eggs. Where does that come from? Uh, the supermarkets. Super what culture is that associated with? Where's your family? Bangladesh. Bangladesh. What's a typical breakfast in Bangladesh? Rotis. Uh, Rotis. Eggs. Well, how are eggs made? Sun, sunrise style? <laughs> how do you do the eggs? Like spices. spices. What color are the eggs? Uh, it's like yellow. Yellow. Yeah. All right, tight. Yeah. All right. Tight. Everybody see the point I'm trying to get to or not? You guys see the point? What do you want to do when you finish college? Get a job. What, job, what type of job? I, I don't know yet, but I'll be part of my major is I'm going to do What's that? A psychology. Psychology. So you want to be a shrink. Basically. Okay. All right. And what about you, Yaki? Uh, computer science. Computer science. Okay. And what about you, sister? No, in the back. What? Yes, you. Uh, I'm not computer science. Computer science. Okay. What about you? Right there in the middle. You. Me? Mm-hmm. Um, an accounting. An accounting. Okay. All right. Play it. What about you, Yaki? You just walked in. Economics. Economics. All right, guys. Play it. What kind of stickers you got on your hand? I got a where do they come from? Uh, I think Germany. Germany. What do you say, Abdul uh, yeah. Which is the country of origin of Adidas? Uh, are you ready to retract that statement about Yemen and the coffee? That's a drink came from Yemen. But that wasn't the question. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the question. <laughs> you gotta know when you're what. Just say. You were right. You were right. That's all the ticket. Right. All right. You guys get the point that I'm trying to make or not? You see the direction that I'm going in? Yeah. Yes or no? If you don't see it, okay. The point that I'm trying to go in is we are oftentimes against something verbally. Whether it's a religious issue, a secular issue, a worldly issue. But our actions oftentimes prove the exact opposite. So we say we should not have intercultural and interracial marriages. It's a bad thing. It's going to end up in disaster. We get married to what race will our children belong? Whatever the race and the culture is, let's just say a, 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 an American classic, or your cookie, right? Black and white. Black mother, white father. So the child is going to have what kind of hair? What kind of skin? Are they going to be black? Are they going to be white? Are the whites going to make fun of them? The blacks going to make fun of them? Too black to be white, too white to be black. He's going to be stuck in the middle. He's going to be confused, right? This is what we do on Christmas. This is what you do on Thanksgiving. My family drinks. My family is this. My family lives here, etc. It's chaos. So therefore, you should never ever marry, marry interculturally or interracially for so many reasons. And from those reasons that the children will suffer. 
and they'll be confused and they'll be stuck between two polarized worlds. This is what many people say. And that's just one example. It could be Indian, Pakistani, whatever it may be. I just use the classic American example. A mulatto race, right? But our actions from the clothes we wear, the breakfast that we eat, the lunch that we enjoy, the things that we oftentimes prove the what? The opposite? Only the opposite? Only the opposite? It wasn't the word that I used. The what? Total opposite. That's the point that I'm trying to get to, sister. You understand now? People, they eat things which, hypothetically speaking, they shouldn't be eating because that food is not from your culture. Those clothes are not from your culture. The degree that you're searching for and looking for is not accepted by your culture. All right? We can go deeper than that when it comes to sex and gender. Your culture, you never have that job. You never have that position. Your culture is to do this, to stay here, and to raise children, for argument's sake. But your actions clearly prove that you don't agree with that. And that doesn't make sense. And that is wrong, Islamically and worldly. And there's no difference between the young people, the students, the second generation, the first generation American, versus my father who migrated from this country, my mother who came from this country, my grandparents who came to this country. They say a thing, no interculture, no interrace, but their actions and the things that they benefit in the United States prove what? The opposite. Because if we were back home, we wouldn't be doing this. If we were back home, we wouldn't be doing this. That's your favorite meal, Grandma. You love that. Go to the store and get me some of this. That's not from our culture. Black people don't eat that. People from Philadelphia don't do this. We don't go here. We don't dress like this. We don't drive like this. So the point is that we in our hearts and our minds, if we were to keep it real, we know that it does not make sense to say that there cannot be intercultural and interracial marriages. We know that inside. But our tongues, what we say openly and outwardly, is a different story. And this has been mentioned in the Quran. Allah Azzawajal, he says, وَجَعَدُوا Allah says, he talks about Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Fir'aun, فَلَمَّا جَاءَتْهُمْ عَيَاتِنَا مُبْسِرَةً قَالُوا هَذَا سَلْهُ مُبِينَ When our signs came to them, مُبْسِرَةً Plain, clear, there was no ambiguity. Pharaoh knew it was the truth. They said, هَذَا سِلْهُ مُبِينَ This is magic, sorcery. You bring in sorcery, Moses. Even though they know that it's the truth, Allah says, They rejected. They were obstinate. They were stubborn. They said, No. Even though their nafs, their souls, had full certainty. Why? Allah says, Out of wrong and out of haughtiness. So the human being oftentimes is a very hypocritical creature. He says no to his daughter, no to his son. You can't do this. You shouldn't do this. But he himself enjoys and benefits from so many multicultural and racial things. And that's the peak of hypocrisy. I can do it. I can enjoy it. I can live the American lifestyle, the American dream, but you can't. You have to marry someone from your culture. You have to marry someone from your race. Regardless, we get into the rulers of quarter and some here. We're just talking about dunya wise. I've come to the United States and I've benefited tremendously. I have money over the years. I've become wealthy. I've become very rich. And I may have come from a very humble background in my original country. I have lived the American dream. And if I was back home in this country, that country, it would never, ever be like this. Now listen carefully, guys. Don't think that just because someone migrates to the United States that they're poor. Don't think that a person isn't wealthy in another country. But the wealth there is not like the what? I've been there. Stop the same. It takes two or three or four generations. The wealth is inherited. In the United States, I sell potatoes in Manhattan, a hot dog cart. Five years, ten years, a couple of loans, a couple of this, and what? I have a store. And another five years, I have two stores. Now my son is in college. I don't have to work anymore. And I invested this, and I put it in real estate, and I'm wealthy. And the second generation, you have a silver spoon in your mouth. But back home, the wealth that we had came from seven generations ago. And it was a limited type of wealth. The luxuries were limited. The perks were limited. But the United States is what? I can live like a king and not be an extremely wealthy type of person. So it's a different type of wealth and 
country in the United States, and that is all summed up in the American dream. So why do you want to live the American dream, or you live the American dream, but your daughter's son has to live 7,000 miles away, 100 years ago? That's not, that's not fair anymore. Regardless of the ruling, is it permissible, is it high? Everyone get the point I'm trying to make now? And I'm trying to make an example through breakfast, foods to eat, and one of the greatest manifestations of a culture is what? A food. The first thing that they advertise when you go to a country is what? Culinary arts. That's the first thing. Is this not the case? There's sports, the museums, food. You go on YouTube, street food, in Korea, and this place, and that place. That's the, the, the soul of the culture, is the food. And don't you know, talking about coffee, historically, there were many wars fought, and there were many embargoes, and there were much boycotting based off of food, because the food represented a culture. Don't you know, in the United States, there was a time in which tea was illegal. You could not drink tea. Tea represented what? The British. And their oppression and tyranny. No taxation without representation. And the American drink what? Coffee. How many people drink tea now? How many people have embraced tea? Chai, green tea, matcha, latte, this and that, so on and so forth. There was also a time in which coffee was impermissible and unlawful in Western Europe. Read your facts, Yaqi. Read your history. There was a time in which Western Europe had made coffee forbidden. And that is because coffee was associated with Muslims. It was a drink of those who worship Muhammad, the Mohammedans. They found it, developed it, they processed it, they, process it, they, drunk, they, they would drink the coffee to stay up to pray, and the Christians said, no, no Christian in them can drink coffee. It's just a drink, but the drink represents what? A culture. So the moment someone accepts a drink or eggs or this or that, it means that they have opened up their cultural what? Doors. You get the point that I'm trying to make? It means that they've opened up their what? The cultural, cultural doors. I hate people from Bangladesh. I hate them. I don't know. I would never support them. I would never wear any clothes from them. I would never buy any food from them. I don't want anyone to look at me or to catch me dead in anything to do with what? Bangladesh. And that's because I don't like them, so therefore their culture is what? Off limits. You get the point that I'm trying to make? But that's not the same as, all right, that's one of my favorite foods, these type of eggs. And I love these type of movies. I love this type of drink. I love this type of tea. I love these type of sweets. I love their language. I love and I love, but I tell my daughter, you can't marry someone from Bangladesh. You can only marry a, a boy that's black. Don't ever bring no Bangladesh boy home to my house. Fair or unfair? You get the point I'm trying to make? It's not adding up now. Everyone understand that? So this is, the, this is the message that I'm trying to get across to you guys today, is that you have to look at the intercultural and the interracial marriages in a real scope, not in a fake scope. Your parents, my parents, these people, they're not running around talking about Shafi, Ahmed, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. They're not even religious, except for the people whom Allah has mercy on. And there are some, alhamdulillah, but we all know the reality. My parents want dunya. They want me to get dunya. They want to stack and save and build. That's all they want. So when it comes to my happiness, a beautiful sister that I want to marry from another country, they say, oh, that's haram. Uh, Al Madhab says you can't do that. Or the Muslim at the masjid said she, she should be from your own culture. But Umi, what about the riba? Umi, you don't, wear, you don't wear hijab outside the house. Umi, you don't pray. I came up with a girlfriend, you said it was okay. But I said, when I marry a sister from another country, now you're saying, halal, halal, you become a fakina. You get the, the contradiction here? If you're living that religious lifestyle, sunnah lifestyle, and you're following the rules, that's one thing. And there are scholars who have said that from the conditions of marriage or an obligation of marriage is compatibility in genealogy. al kafatu fi nesab Compatibility in race and background. There's scholars who have said that. If you're following that and that's your lifestyle, that's one thing. But Umi, you don't wear a quinoa outside the house. Abby, you pray, you shave your beard, you smoke cigarettes, you flirt with women, you only go to the masjid for Juma, and now you want to play the religious card and tell me it's harm to marry someone unless I give you my permission. You see the games that are being played here? That's the point that makes sense.
Have I got this or not? Am I understanding this? So the Islamic discussion of an intercultural and an interracial relationship, a marriage, is there. Like you mentioned, I think it's a very good answer. And the sister also mentioned with regards to New York City. And you mentioned with regards to genes. These are, deep, these are valid points. And you also mentioned about, I encourage it, right? Because we live in New York City. I'm from a place, your place. I had something for breakfast, you had something for breakfast. We live multi what? Culturally. And we also live multi what? Racially, except for marriage. No. Now it can only be one race. Now it can only be one culture. But going to school, getting a degree, making money, what? Sure. My classmate is from West Africa, my professor is from Connecticut. My classmate is from this country, this country, that's all fine. No racism, racism, no feminism, no chauvinism, etc. But when it comes to marriage, you building a family, they say what? No. I don't think that that's fair. That's the point that I'm trying to get to. As far as if we were to discuss the Islamic rulings, al ahkam al sharia al fiqhiyah the rulings, you will find some scholars holding, holding the view is that a man and a woman who have different culture or have different races should not be married. And some may even say they can be married if the wali refuses. And there are other scholars who say the exact opposite. Arab can marry non-Arab, black can marry white, yellow can marry red, as long as the other conditions are fulfilled. But we are not even there yet, is the point that I'm trying to make. We're not there yet. Everybody right, understand? So I think that the message is clear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should knows best. What's important is, if you want to hear the ruins of these things in detail, then we have classes that we have done on this subject and what the scholars actually say. What are the hadiths? Did the Prophet allow a companion from a race to marry another companion from another race, another female companion? Did the Prophet allow a man who was a weaver or a cupper to marry someone who was a noble aristocrat? The proof and evidence is there. What does the Qur'an say? In the Akramakum and the line of Qahum. The best of you are those who are most pious. Women ayati khalqu samawati wal ard. Allah says from Allah's signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth. And the difference of what? Waqtilafu al sinatikum wa alwanikum. And the differences between your tongues and your colors. In the fidali al ayatin al alimin. Allah says, in that are signs for learned people. So racial diversity and cultural diversity should never be shunned, according to the Quran. Rather, it should be embraced. It should be embraced. There is a different culture, different race, different language. And this is one of the most basic, fundamental pillars of college and university in the United States. Is this not the case? And anyone who said anything against this will be immediately what? Shunned immediately. If a professor said, Black people are stupid, and not only the whites can learn. Asian people are the smartest, and people who come from Germany, they have no intelligence. All they can do is make war. Men are smarter than women. Women should only make babies. What would happen to a professor who said this? What would happen to him? How long was his career? There will be a witch hunt immediately on him. They would raise terror against this person if he spoke like that. I apologize. I made a mistake. He would never teach again. So this is the culture in which we live. We benefit from these values, except when it comes to you finding a wife. Then we have to go back to the other values. So it's not making sense, guys. We're not following the Quran and the Sunnah. We're not following the modern trend. We're not following common sense. That which makes sense. We're stuck. We're stuck in a field of just stagnation. Culture, religion, modernity, progressiveness, we're just stuck. And that is why we have many Muslims who don't want to get married. I'd rather have a girlfriend, it's easier, it's simpler, less stress, less headache. I don't want to get married because it's just going to be a divorce. My father's greedy. He's going to take all of the money that I got. He's going to take all of my gold. My mother's going to keep interfering, telling me how to live and run my marriage. So I don't want to get married. Rather, I don't even want to be righteous. I don't even want to go to the masjid. I don't want to go to the mosque. I just want to be a normal person. I go to college. I have fun. I come from a Muslim background. That's it. This is a product of this backwards thinking that so many parents suffer from today. So the message and the point is, is to think and to reflect, guys, huh?
If you go to your father and your father says you can't marry a brother because he comes from a Middle Eastern country, say, Abby, you shouldn't eat Middle Eastern food. And you shouldn't go to a Middle Eastern mosque. And you shouldn't wear this and you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that because you're accepting other cultures and you're benefiting from other cultures. Allah Azza wa Jalla surely knows best. If anybody has anything you want to add, now is the time. If we have time, if you have any questions, now is the time as well. And Allah knows best. Do we have time in here? Seven minutes. Did you answer a question in the class? This is another question. No, no, I'm saying, did you answer a question? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Buy your parents Rosetta Stone. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you saying exactly what And I believe that some parents are sincere in this. And as I said in the lecture, guys, don't think that every mixing or all mixing of culture is correct. Sometimes it won't work. Like I said, even from the same race. I come from the suburbs. You come from the 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 hood, huh? the heart. <laughs> if I'm not flexible, or you're not flexible, if I'm open, if I'm not open-minded, it's not going to work. No doubt about that. You understand? On so many different norms, and don't think it's about just because the person comes from the suburbs they're better. Me, my culture. I make an example. I, I wear dirty, dog, dusty shoes. You see people, maybe some of you guys, and with your shoes, you don't give no care or concern to them. I have a pair of Adidas, Chuck Taylors. They used to be white, they're now gray. You know what I'm talking about or not? Is this not a cultural norm among many people or not? But I have thousands and things of dollars made me in my bank account. And you find somebody who may come from the hood in which what? Any scratch stuff? Sneakers are fresh. So how are we even going to agree see eye to eye? You say buying good, nice shoes is extravagance and wasting money. And I say, you know, those nasty, disgusting, ran down shoes, I want to be caught dead with you. Everybody get the point I'm trying to make? And there are thousands of other examples as well. So there has to be mixing and merging mentally. And if, you, if you're not willing to do that, then it won't work. Everybody get this? So problems can arise. Don't think I'm painting some utopia here. No, problems can arise. And it isn't always about race. It could be about culture, as I said. Urban versus suburban. How you look at money, what type of money you make. Everyone understand this? Where I come from, let's say you, you sell things on the street. You have, you're an entrepreneur. You may make more money than I do. But my culture, you have to have a pay stub. You have to have a job in which you check in. That's my culture. That's what's acceptable to me. And you say, I make more money in a week than you make, make, you make in a month. But yet still, it's a what? It's a cultural clash. So there are problems that arise. And one of those problems is communication. Whether it's language, slang, or expression. There may be a mother who wants to have a relationship with her son-in-law, but she doesn't speak English. Or her English is different than the English she speaks. That is an obstacle. But if you really like that brother, and that brother really likes you, and he has the other good characteristics, they'll find a way to get around that. Just like I found the way when I came to the United States in 1950 from this country to learn English. Come on, man. You gotta, you gotta tell you, homie, you can do better than that, homie. Are you serious? You get pulled over by a police officer. First thing you do is say, yeah, I don't understand. Police officer says, get out of the car right now. You're gonna do what? What are you gonna do? You understand. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you got to be mindful of where there's a will, there's a way. If he's a good Muslim, he's a good brother, he's handsome, he's young, comes from a good faith, you'll learn English. Or you'll have a communication off of a few basic words, that'll be enough. You don't have to be a scholar of language to sit and share a cup of tea with somebody. That, that's my advice. I think accepting of our children, of our children. Um, I think the, the real problem is a permanent change. It's the, it's changing, it's, they want to go on to the roots. How do you argue that? 
You go back home. You tell your mother and father, go back home. You come to America, you got the nationality, you made enough money, go back home now. We're gonna leave the United States, right? We're gonna go back home whether you live in a city, a village, whether you were poor, whether you were rich. Why are we still in the United States if you're afraid of permanent change? That's a lie. If you are really afraid and scared of permanent change, you would rip up your blue passport. You would go to whatever country you want to. And there's no disrespect to anyone's culture. Like I said, you could have been wealthy before you were. Came to the United States. You've been an aristocrat back home. But I hate Americans. I hate their way, I hate their language. They're cheap, they're rude, they're stingy, they're dirty. Okay, so what you do what now? Go. Oh, you got the education. I got my degree. You made all the money, let's leave. Why are you here? So something isn't consistent is the point I'm trying to make. Someone is not being honest. That's the point I'm trying to make. And it is your job, if you're trying to fight for your rights to marry who you want to marry, it is your job to find that point of hypocrisy and contradiction and exploit it. Do you understand these words? Find it and then what? Exploit it. And say, Abby, you're not being honest with yourself or with me. You don't want me to marry him because he has a different skin color. Just say it, Abby. You're racist. <laughs> No one wants to accept that in the world in which we live. And that's because we've benefited from civil rights. We've all benefited from civil rights. But the little brown baby? No, 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 no. You're racist, Abby. You have to accept it. You're a product and a victim of your time. Or the opposite. Because racism and colorism goes the opposite as well. My son wants to marry a white woman. And I said, I don't want no pale skin baby walking around my house. I don't want no, no half white black baby walking around Austin. It goes both ways, guys. The point of woman and something. Okay? My son may say, Abby, we should against white people. So you have to find where that inconsistency is and make that your argument. And along those best. Khayran, inshallah? I know for some parents, when you try to have these discussions, they automatically say you're being disrespectful. Like, you're not being raised. So how do you get past pointing out the Right. Maybe the child is being rude. Maybe. But that doesn't change the reality of what I'm saying. Let alone the fact that I'm not rude with me. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. You know I'm not rude. I'm telling you I'm going to marry this brother. You tell me no for no other reason except he comes from a different background. I'm being respectful. I'm telling you what I read. I'm showing you what I read. This is what I want on me. I feel that this brother will make me happy. He's a good Muslim. He has a good job, so on and so forth. There's no rudeness in that. And if I was rude, it's impermissible for a Muslim to ignore and to deny the reality. To ignore and to deny the reality that's in front of you. Okay? The Quran teaches us to take the wisdom from whoever brings it. Whoever brings the wisdom. An enemy, a friend, or a foe. You wear pearls. Who goes into the sea? Who retrieves those pearls from the sea? What do their hands look like? Are they clean people, dirty people? But if you got a pearl necklace, would you not put it around your neck? Would you not wear it? Diamonds. The bloody history of the diamond. Where it came from. How many people were oppressed to get that diamond. But you still do what? Because you take the value of the thing. So you have to make sure that you're not rude and you're not disrespectful. And if that's their argument, then you eliminate that argument. Only I'm not being rude. Only I'm telling them I want to get married. I'm telling them there's a brother that I like, I'm interested in, so on and so forth. You can't reject him only just because he comes from a different background. That's not Islam, I mean. That's, that, that's not consuming, that's not the end. That's not being rude. And if they keep saying that that's rude and you're being disrespectful, their argument eventually will fade. But you have to make sure that you don't budge on your position. And your position doesn't necessarily have to be marrying this one brother. But your position is it's wrong to reject a brother just because his race or his culture. That's wrong, Umi. And you know it's wrong. It's wrong. Islamically wrong, and it's wrong in the college. It's wrong in New York City. So you have, to, you have to be firm on that position and don't let them push you away. They want to bring the imam. The sheikh says, oh no, you have to obey your parents. All of that. And you say, I believe in all of those verses and all those hadiths that are authentic. And that is why I'm trying to give you advice on me to get rid of the prejudice or the colorism or the racism that you have in your heart. And that is from Bill. Being a good son and a good member. Jazakum khair, guys. I'm sorry that I can't stay and continue this discussion. We have officially run out of time. 
Uh, if you have more questions or you want to know more about it, maybe we can talk about it again. Or you guys can visit the channel, hadithdisciple.com. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Assalamu alaikum wa